training and how we potty trained our two-year-old son within one week. So to get started, I'm going to be talking about some of the tools and resources that we used going into the potty training process, as well as some tips for success. The most important tip that I have is just to ensure, and I know you guys have heard this before, but it is so important to ensure that your toddler is actually ready to be potty trained because it's helpful in the process and in the long run. Because if your toddler isn't ready to be potty trained, you may run into an instance where Although you have had success, later on down the line, your toddler may regret or they will then start to use the bathroom on their self or in their underwear again because they weren't actually ready and they were kind of just in the motion of it and just excited about it for a short period of time. So just to make sure that they are fully prepared and to make sure that it sticks, you just want to make sure that your toddler is fully ready to be potty trained it will save a lot of stress a lot of tension and a lot of difficulty and that's not to say that potty training isn't going to be stressful and difficult already but it will be a lot less stressful and a lot less difficult if your toddler is ready it will also be more of a fun and a learning experience full of you know just happiness just due to the fact that your toddler is completing a new milestone as opposed to you forcing something on your toddler because you are ready even though they are not. So readiness for potty training is going to look different on every toddler. It's going to be different and it's going to be based upon your toddler, your toddler's age and just, you know, in general, it's just going to be different for every toddler and for every parent in every household. So some ways that we knew our toddler was ready to be potty trained was that he began to be able to communicate with us. So if your toddler isn't able to actually communicate with you, and even if he isn't forming full sentences, if you can communicate with your toddler and your toddler can communicate with you, then they will be able to communicate with you when they need to go potty. So if they cannot fully or communicate with you in some form or type of way, just generally, then it'll be difficult for you to get them to communicate to you that they need to go potty. So our son, he began to communicate a lot more once he turned two. When he was one, he still was trying to form his first words and he was barely forming sentences. So when he was one years old, it was a lot more difficult for us to potty train him. When he was two and he was beginning to find his voice, it was a lot easier to potty train him. Um, another sign that your toddler is ready to be potty trained is that they begin to actually tell you. They're telling you that they have either already gone potty or that they have to go potty or that their diaper or pull up is wet. If they're telling you that they've soiled their pamper, then that's another sign that they may be ready for potty training because that means that they know that they've gone potty and that they're uncomfortable with it and they can actually tell you so they're stopping in the middle of their day no matter what they have going on to let you know that they have used their potty and that's what you're going to need when um you're potty training you're going to need them to stop no matter what they're doing to actually let you know hey i had to go potty so that's another important sign and then um one of the other or the most um important things was that he knew how to take his pants off and he was able to pull them back up and the same goes for his pull up. He's able to pull his pull up down and then he's able to pull it back up because that's something else that they're going to need to know in order to, you know, potty train. And that's not to say that we can't teach them those things, but if they already know how to do these things and that is just a sign that's telling us that, okay, they're ready to be potty trained. So those are some of the signs that Noah was displaying to us. He was communicating to us regularly in all instances. He communicated to us when he has gone potty in his diaper or his pull-up and he was able to undress himself and then dress himself back. So those are the top three ways that we knew Noah was ready to be potty trained and then he also stayed dry more often through the day and even through the night. So what did we use and what did we utilize? So um, we did purchase a portable potty seat and I will leave a link in the description below to the one that we use. I believe that it was by summer and it kind of just looks just like a regular toilet. It's not the fun playful ones because we didn't want him to um, think it was a toy because Noah will play with it but we wanted him to know that he's only supposed to go potty and we wanted it to resemble 
the actual toilet so I will leave a link to that one below um, we used a portable potty seat so the one that you sit on top of the actual toilet boxer briefs underwear um, flushable wipes a sticker chart snacks and treats potty books a disposable toilet cover and I will show you guys that disinfectant wipes and um, underwear covers so before we begin potty training these are the books that we used so we used this one by um, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and this book is called potty time and he really liked this book a lot and we read it um, a couple of days before we begin potty training and it just goes through the motions of going potty flushing the toilet and washing hands and it plays music and sounds and it's not a long book so that means that they are going to be able to um, get through this book without being distracted and it's short enough that they can even read it you know sitting on the potty while going through the motions we did the same thing with dino potty and we got this one off Amazon. We got them both off Amazon. Actually, no, we got this one from Burlington and this one from Amazon. And this is Dino Potty. Learn to potty with Dino. And he liked this book. And we read it before we began potty training as well. These are the briefs that we use. They are Mickey Mouse briefs because he likes Mickey Mouse. So we purchased these from Amazon and it came with about six in a pack and we knew that he would really like this because it has his favorite character on it and then in addition we also purchased the actual boxer briefs and these came with about six in a pack as well and these are what we used to start these are the covers and so if you're going to be taking your toddler out in public or taking him in places during the potty training um, process then these are good to have because you can slide them over the actual underwear so that if they do have an accident their clothes will stay dry even though you'll have to remove this and then change their underwear another thing that we used when we were traveling while potty training are our toilet covers um these are the toilet covers so they come in little packages like this and it actually comes with quite a lot in the package and this is how it looks so you take it with you um, so that if you're in public and you're out away from home you can just put this little disposable toilet seat cover over the toilet and then you just go ahead and set your toddler on top of this or um, you can also set them on top of the portable potty seat and this is just helpful for maintaining cleanliness so that you can still have your toddler sit on the potty when they're out in public or on the toilet when they're out in public and it's you know just clean and then just have like some like a small pack of Lysol wipes inside of the little bag with you so that you can just sanitize it and spray it down and wipe it down put it back in your bag and then take it with you um so those are just a few of the things that I had on hand to show you guys that we use so the books and the traveling necessities as well as the underpants the nappy covers and the toddler briefs that we used while we were potty training with him so now we're just going to go ahead and get to what we actually did and i'm going to break it up day by day so the things that we did were gave him high praise we utilized a reward system which was just a sticker chart and some of his favorite treats and then we carved out time where we did literally nothing else like for the first two to three days we sat in one room or i followed him through the house and we played you know together and i didn't leave the home i didn't tend to any major responsibilities i pretty much just you know watched him and play with him and really tried to enforce this potty training system the things that we did not do were fill him up on liquids, which I know a lot of people recommend that you do that. But this is just one thing that we didn't do so that we can actually learn what his bladder capacity was. We knew that if we were to fill him up on a lot of liquids to try and convince him to go potty, we wouldn't know how long he could actually hold his bladder throughout the day. Um, on a normal eating and drinking schedule. So we didn't fill him up on liquids. We didn't discipline him if he had any accidents. And we did it utilize waking him up at night in the middle of the night to go potty. We also did not use pull-ups. So the day before we began potty training, we 
had a talk with him and we just let him know that he's a big boy now. We're going to begin potty training. The diapers and pull-ups are going to go bye-bye and no more diapers, no more pull-ups. Um, we showed him his potty chair, which he was already familiar with because, again, we tried potty training him when he was one year old, but he just wasn't ready when he was one year old. So we just stopped and we just took a break because we didn't want to force on him and we just didn't want to make it stressful. So he already was familiar with his potty chair and we just showed it to him and told him, this is where you're going to go potty now, no more diapers. Um, and then we read those potty books that I showed you guys. And that was the day before we began potty training. On day one, day one was bare bottom day. So when he woke up, we took off his diaper and we watched him and we didn't put the pull up back on. We were using the Pampers 360 um, diapers. They're kind of like a pull up and a diaper all in one. So when I say diaper or pull up, I'm just referring to the same thing. The Pampers 360s cruisers. Um, so again, we removed it and we never went back. Like we told him, no more diapers. Diapers are gonna go bye bye. And then we went and we tossed them in the trash and we said bye bye diapers together. So all day he went with no bottoms at all, no underwear, no diapers, no pants, just socks and a t-shirt. Um, and we threw it away throughout the way throughout the day. We just reminded him, um, hey, don't forget if you have to go potty, you do it here on your potty seat. Don't forget if you have to go potty, you can tell mommy or you can tell daddy that you have to go potty. Um, whenever he did go potty, we praised him like highly, like we sang, we jumped up and down and we clapped and we gave him a sticker to put on his sticker sheet and then we let him pick a treat out of a bag. So we just put cookies, we put candy, um, we put treats that he wouldn't normally get on a normal day. And we know, um, you know, like it's not good for him in the long run. But for this specific purpose, us personally, we utilized those treats and they were very helpful because, again, he doesn't get them normally, so he knew that he's only going to get this from potty success. Um, so when it was time for him to take his nap, I was really nervous, so I didn't want to put him on any pull-up or diaper. So what I did was I laid a towel down on the bed and then he just napped on the towel and he woke up completely dry. I was surprised and I was super happy. Um, and when he woke up dry, I told him like, oh my goodness, look, Noah, you stayed dry. You didn't wet the bed, let's get you a sticker because you didn't wet the bed and let's get you a treat. So we gave him a treat when he woke up dry from his nap. And then at night, um, we put him to sleep in his cloth diaper. So you can find cloth diapers on Amazon and I will leave a link in the description box below, but they look like underwear um, because we never really utilized cloth diapers. We tried them when he was an infant and we didn't continue using them. Um, so for him, a cloth diaper just wasn't a diaper because he's used to the disposable diaper. So we used a cloth diaper at night so that if he did have an accident, it would kind of absorb it and we wouldn't have to wake him um, in the night to change the sheets and things like that. Um, but we just wanted to use it as, you know, a safety precaution. So we went, we went ahead and put him to sleep inside of his, we put him to sleep in his cloth diaper. And for day one, we actually did wake him in the middle of the night. So we held liquid two hours before bedtime. And then once he went to sleep about five hours later into the night, he was still dry and I just couldn't sleep. Like I was so worried. I did wake him up and I asked him if he had to go potty. I set him on the potty and he went potty, but it was such a teeny amount. Like it was a small amount and he was kind of upset. He went back to sleep easily, but honestly, I just didn't feel right interrupting his sleep schedule just to get him to go a teeny bit. And that's not something that I knew I wanted to do regularly. So after day one, we never woke him in the night again. Day two was the exact same thing. Day two was bare bottom day as well. No bottoms, just a t-shirt and socks, no pants, no diaper, no underwear, the same thing. We reminded him to go potty. We asked him if he had to go potty. We praised him when he had to go potty. We rewarded him after he went to potty. And then at night, he slept with nothing um, but underwear. So we didn't do the cloth diaper. Instead, we put him on the underwear that we were going to have him wear on day three. He woke up the next morning completely dry. He didn't have any accidents. And let me also add in that on day one, 
And on day two, he didn't have any accidents. He didn't go on the floor. Um, he didn't have any accidents. He made it to the potty every single time. And I did ask him very often, but honestly, I don't think that I had to. Um, because he didn't have anything on, he knew if he had to go potty, he needed to do it on his potty seat. So for day three, he woke up in his underwear and they were completely dry. When he woke up, I explained to him that we were gonna be keeping the underwear on. I gave him praise for waking up dry, for not wetting his underwear. And I made sure that I really, really, you know, explained like, look, your underwear are dry. And I said, see, feel it, they're dry. Wow, that's good, good thing. You know, your underwear are dry, that is what we want. Let's get you a sticker, let's get you a treat. And then we left the underwear on throughout the day. Day three was regression day. So he didn't understand that he has to go potty when he has something on his bottoms. He didn't understand that just because, um, you know, he has on underwear, I still want him to go use it on his potty. So whenever he had to go, he went in his underwear and I just guess he didn't mind being wet because he knew that I would change his underwear if they were damp. So all of day three accidents all day long that was regression day i think he made it to the potty maybe maybe twice honestly just twice besides that um accidents multiple accidents throughout the day but then he had a dry night he slept through the night and then he woke up dry and noah does sleep eight to twelve hours through the night so um Sometimes it's eight hours and then sometimes it's 12 hours and then whichever hours he left at night, he just gets in a nap during the day. So eight to 12 hours is how long he's going through the night without having any um, accidents. So day one, day two, and day three, no accidents through the night. Day one and two, no accidents at all. Day three, accidents throughout the day, no accidents at night. And this is when he had on his underpants. So on day four, so I was really starting to become discouraged because it was just a full day of me washing his underwear and washing his underpants and after the first two days of success I thought maybe I started doing something wrong on day three but that is not the case mommies so don't get discouraged you just have to keep going so on day four I had people asking me to join them on an outing but I just knew how important it was that I did not break the cycle day or I still had not left the house. I mean, we hadn't gone anywhere. I hadn't gone anywhere. We had not done anything. So that is extremely important in this potty training process because it's so easy to get distracted and then you're, you've taken several steps back. So you have to run the course. And if you're not able to do so, then try and um, explain to the person who's going to be keeping your child, you know, that your potty training and make sure you give them the tools and resources and knowledge that they need to do it when you're not there um so um for day four underwear again and he had a few accidents sometimes he went to the potty and then sometimes he had accidents but by evening it completely he stopped having accidents um by evening of day four he started going to the potty even when he had his underwear on, he understood finally that you still have to go to the potty and use the potty even when you have something on your bottom. And that day we praised him like never before. Like we gave him the highest praise that we've given him throughout the entire process and gave him treats and stickers and rewards as well. And after that, he continued to use the potty instead of his, instead of his underwear for the rest of day four and then again he had a dry night so for day five day five was both underwear and pants so he knew that he needed to go to the potty when he didn't have anything on his bottom he knew that he had to go to the potty when he had on his underwear and for day five we needed to teach him that he also had to go potty when he was fully dressed in jeans or jogging pants shoes any of that so for day five we put him on underwear and jogging pants and socks and just fully dressed him you know for the day like we normally would and he did pretty good he didn't have any accents that day he continued to go potty again we just continued to remind him ask him praise him reward him 
um, and Bath continued to work throughout day five and he stayed dry throughout the night. So day six was a full outing day. So now we needed to teach him that he's also going to have to go potty or tell us that he has to go potty when we leave the house. So we actually had two baby showers to attend to and a few errands to run. So first I let him go potty before we left the house and I put him on his underwear and I put his nappy cover on over it because I was just a little worried and just to try and make things easier I didn't want him to wet his clothes if he did. Um, so we had to go to the store. The store was only about five minutes away from the house. He would potty, we dressed him, and then we went to the store. Five minutes away, we stayed there for about 10 minutes, and then we had to attend the baby shower, and that was about a 25 minute drive. He stayed dry for the full car ride, and then once we got inside of the building, I took him potty, and we used the portable um, potty seat, or the portable toilet seat cover, the Lysol wipes, and then we used the um, disposable toilet seat cover. And then we used our Lysol wipes and we cleaned everything down. We also took flushable wipes and baby wipes. We took um, like this, like a small bottle of like alcohol for disinfectant spray for the potty seat. Um, and he used the potty um, and then we, you know, attended to our event. And then right before we left, we did the same thing. I took him to the potty and he went potty and then we got in the car and went to our second event was a 35 minute drive. He stayed dry um, for the entire ride and once we got inside, I took him potty. Now, when we got here, there were other children and a lot of things to do. So I was very worried. He actually gave me some fuss and fight whenever I asked him if he had to go potty because there was more distraction for him. So it's very important if your child is surrounded by a lot of um, distractions that you continue to remind them and continue to enforce but you have to be the person to remind them because they may or may not tell you if they have to go potty because they don't want to actually stop doing what they're doing if they're having a lot of fun and in Noah's case he was really enjoying playing with the other children which he doesn't normally have a chance to do so he didn't really want to stop so he gave me some fuss and some fight but we made it to the potty and we stayed dry before we left we went potty again and then we drove home it was a 45 minute drive home he stayed dry we put him in a tub put him in his underwear and he went to sleep and he had another dry night so in the full six days there was only one and a half day that he had accidents day one and day two he stayed completely dry throughout the day and the night and those are bare bottom days Day three was regression day. He started to wear underwear, but he didn't understand that with his underwear on, he still needed to tell me when he had to go potty. He had multiple accidents throughout the day and he stayed dry through the night. Day four was also underwear day and he had multiple accidents throughout the first half of the day. And then he began to stay dry throughout the evening and the night. On day five, underwear and clothing day. We fully dressed him and he stayed dry throughout the entire day as well as the entire night and then on day six was a full outing day where we completely dressed him. We utilized the nappy covers which we actually didn't need and he stayed dry throughout the entire day and the entire night. After, after day six it was just complete success thereafter. After day six he fully grasped and he was officially potty trained. We didn't have any more accidents and we just continued at least for the next two weeks after that to just monitor him and continue to remind him and continue to um, praise him. We didn't continue giving him treats after day six. We did utilize the sticker chart for an additional week, but after that additional week, we removed the sticker chart as well and continued to give him high praise for a third week. After that, we kind of just slowly just, you know, stopped giving him high praise, stop rewarding him, stop giving him treats. Even now, months later, we still tell him when he goes potty, good job, but we just don't over exaggerate it as much. And he's been doing really, really well. Um, so just some tips to remember is just to be completely patient. Don't be discouraged. Make sure that both you and your child are ready for potty training as opposed to just you. And 
your child isn't ready, um, make sure that you really instill the routine at least the first two to three days. But if you can, you know, really be able to do nothing else for the entire week, that's great. If not, at least the first two to three days. So a weekend would be a great time to start. Um, make sure that you're getting your toddler in a routine to go potty in the morning once they wake, once before bed, and also before nap time. Hold liquids two hours before bedtime, not necessarily before nap time, but definitely two hours before bedtime so that they can have some time to empty out their tank and they're not going through the night. And just don't forget to um, stay positive throughout the process because if you're negative and if you're frustrated, your toddler will be negative and frustrated as well. Accidents are going to happen. They're bound to happen, but it's important to just stay in control. Don't lose control. Don't become frustrated because if you do, your toddler will as well. So just run the course, stay positive, and when you reach the finish line, make sure that you congratulate yourself as well. Yes, your child has completed an amazing milestone. They wouldn't have been able to do without you. So make sure that you really just take some time to reflect on that because it's important that although we're rewarding our children, we must also reward ourselves because it's important and it's gonna give us the strength and the courage that we need to complete every milestone thereafter. So again, these are just some of the things that we did, the routine and the process that we followed in potty training our two-year-old son with every child, with every family, with every mama, it's gonna be different. But if you're just looking for a good place to start, then I recommend trying some of these tips and just tailoring them to what works best for you. In the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. I did some research and then I kind of just formed a routine that would be best for myself and for Noah. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Try these tips. Try some other tips that you get from other mamas or from some books or from some online resources and just tailor it to you and your son or your daughter and your family's need. If you found this video helpful and you would like to see more content like this, please, please, please subscribe and hit the like button if you liked this video. I will be posting more videos once per week and I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye.